So I've got my cells all tested, and I used this uh, board, this testing board, uh, nicknamed Sparky, to do it. The capacity tests were done by these Opus BT C3100 or something like that. Uh, it's the same ones that everybody uses. But the unfortunate part is uh, these guys, so there's 24 bays here, and they all test slightly differently. And since I didn't know exactly what was going to go on, what I did was I wrote the initial starting voltage, which is 4 point whatever this number is, so 4.21. I wrote which bay it started in, which bay it tested in, sorry. And then I wrote the final amount. So uh, my thought is I can use some data analysis to try and eliminate some biases that happen to be in my testing apparatus. So let's see what that looks like. So while I was uh, actually charging, I recorded everything here, including the bay, uh, the voltage, which again, this is four point uh, whatever, and then the actual milliamp hour that it tested at. Um, I, I tried doing a little bit of graphing inside of Google Docs, but it, it didn't really turn out that well. So what I did was I just created this little concatenation that um, made the results into JSON, copy and pasted that over here and I've got that data pulled in. I'm just using a uh, library called Plotly just to just generate a plot. Uh, I'm using a violin plot for this because it's kind of nice based on what I'm going to be showing in a moment. Um, and we can see some really interesting information. So my mean was 2130. So out of about 2000 cells tested, uh, 2130 was my average milliamp hour capacity. Not too bad. And um, then, so we, we can start exploring this a little bit. So this is all cells tested, so let's uh, separate by the bay. So, and you'll see really recognizable patterns there. So let's, instead of separating this by bay, uh, let's do it by uh, initial charging voltage. Now we see, so we started at 4.14, for instance, 4.16, but the actual distributions within there for the capacity, there's not really any strong correlation, otherwise we'd see that bulge. So what this is telling me, at least for the, the voltages in this range, is it doesn't particularly matter uh, for the capacity. So you, we have some variance here, but this is really just because there's not a lot of cells tested there. So uh, really we have great correlation within uh, by the bay. So what we can do is we can say, okay, there's a mean of 2101, for instance, here, and the a mean of all cells was 2130. So I can correct for that and say this bay is off by, say, 20, 29 milliamp hours. And I'll take and say every cell tested marked with bay 5, I'll shift up by 29 milliamp hours to get to the average. So here's all the uh, offsets. That number five ended up being closer to 28 once I considered the decimal places. Okay, so here's a cell. It was charged in bay two. And if I look over here, bay two needs to be shifted up by 41. So this guy was tested at 2065. So 2065 plus 41 is going to be 2106, I believe, if my math is right and that's terrible handwriting, but 2106 is what the new uh, unbiased capacity is. Then just need to repeat that a couple thousand times. Then the obvious question of is this worth it? Uh, you've got to decide for you. I felt like it was a fairly easy step to add in the process and you've got to mark down the uh, cell milliamp hour capacities anyways. Might as well mark the bay that you charged them on and then correct that. Now you maybe could do this a different way. Perhaps you take a single cell and test it multiple times in each bay. Um, but this method with the statistics worked out well for me. So maybe it helps you too.